Okay? Uh, last week we had a little bit of a uh, glitch. No, it wasn't a little, it was a big one. We ran out of uh, memory on the memory card for the video. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of recap uh, as we pick up this series, Problems, Problems, Problems. Week one a few weeks ago was on worry. And then last week we began looking at the subject of stress. And I'm going to pick up on that today. And I've decided, uh, uh, frankly, from some of the response, uh, remember I gave you today to read 1 Kings uh, 19, 1 to 18 on Elijah. And uh, so I was doing that as well. And the more I read about Elijah and what he experienced, uh, which is the ultimate burnout, which uh, all of the is what I call burnout. Uh, that's the end. That's when you're about ready to big step uh, in, as it were. And I just really got into that. So uh, uh, you'll find out at the end. I'm going to ask you to read through that again, but I'm going to teach through that next week. I'm going to teach through First Corinthians, first Kings, uh, 19, 1 to 18, on Elijah and uh, how God came to minister to him in his time of uh, uh, really despair, discouragement, as it were, and uh, unbelievable uh, stress. So uh, take your uh, take your listening guide if you would. Take your listening guide, and uh, we're on stress management. Mark on the stress management. And again, I'm going to pick up with a look some of what we did last week, and then a lot of new material. I'll we'll try to give you as much time as I can at the table. Uh, to uh, go through some of the homework that I asked you to do in addition to that. Uh, Mark, show the picture. Okay. All right. Uh, that's Pastor David on Monday mornings. <laughs> so, no, that's really Pastor David in the staff meeting. But uh, that was a picture on the video this week that I sent to you that I was holding up in, in front of me uh, to deal with the subject of, uh, of stress. Okay, so take your, uh, take your outline. And let me walk through uh, some of the opening uh, parts again because I want to get to some of the meat that we didn't get to uh, last week. We talked about the reality of stress. I don't have to convince you of it. You and I live with it uh, uh, every day. Uh, on uh, page two, I gave you a chance to kind of rate yourself on where you are in this season of your life uh, related to uh, uh, stress matters. And I encourage you to have someone uh, uh, beyond yourself, a, a friend, a spouse, uh, somebody to, to, to rate you on you. Just make sure you receive yourself uh, as things uh, perhaps truly are or as others are observing you. Uh, Linda uh, often says to me, I tend to get, other than vertically, I tend to get, one of the symptoms I'm under stress is I tend to get a little bit snippy. I know you find that unbelievable. Okay, and I know that's unmanned. Okay. Do Jimmy snippy? Are you kidding me? And Linda will often say to me, are you under stress? And then I get snippy her. <laughs> okay? So that's usually one among many signs uh, that uh, things are closing in on me and I'm not managed very well. And she's a really good, uh, you know, uh, satellite for me to kind of say, hey, just, you know, Jimmy, get back, uh, get back together. So number two is managing the stress. Managing the stress. Again, I'd say managing. Uh, maybe we can reduce it, but managing it, uh, we can't eliminate it unless we die. Just part of our fallenness and part of the experience. And there are uh, nine suggestions that I'm making to you. We got a few of them last week. I'm going to quickly review them. Number one, honor the temple. These are not necessarily in order, but I know one of the things that changed about my life uh, uh, some six years ago as a result of the hard issues that I had, which were really, I think, the result of a lot of years of not managing to stress well in my own personal journey. So take care of the one uh, temple and body uh, that God gave you and me uh, from, from birth. And our responsibility is to take care of that. It's not anybody else's responsibility. Uh, eat healthy. Uh, moderation is good, but eat healthy. Exercise regularly. Do something. Okay? Uh, walk. If you can't walk, roll. Kind of roll. Oh, do something. Practice uh, deep breathing. I found that very helpful. Uh, rest. Uh, you know, uh, lie down. Uh, in fact, uh, Psalm 23. Mark, throw up. Uh, I think I've got a couple verses out of Psalm 23. Uh, oh, no. Let me, let me read these two. I didn't read these two earlier uh, out of Matthew 11 and Hebrews 4. Uh, notice the theme here of the need to rest. The rest, to take a break. Come to me, uh, says Jesus, all who are lazy, labor and are heavy laden. When life begins to close, when you're stressed, I will give you 
rest. And there is no rest like His rest. Okay? Take my yoke upon you. In other words, let's share the burdens together. The reason they yoke oxen together is they can share the load. So let's get in the yoke with Him. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. There it is Rest. Real rest. True rest for your souls. I've wondered when I've read that many times, is soul rest deeper than body rest? I bet it is. That's real rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? And then the next passage out of the writer of Hebrews. Uh, so then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest, again, there, that's, there's no rest like God's rest, has also rested from His works as God did from His. You've got to take a break. Uh, how many of you use some kind of device that connects you to people with the internet? Phone, computer, all of us. You can't survive in this world. How many of you never, ever charge it? Really? Why? You don't want it to die. Why? Because you got to have it. Okay? And yet, we think we don't need to shut down. That we don't need margin and rest. We do. We do. God also read you from His works. Let us therefore strive to enter. You know, it's not easy. You've got to strive. It takes effort. Strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall short uh, by, the, by the same sort of disobedience as follow the people of God. Okay? Next slide, Mark. Keep going, buddy. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Psalm 23, 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. These next, these next two sentences are, He makes me lie down in green pastures. Not He lets, not He encourages, but He makes me to lie down in great pastures. Why? Because we don't want to lie down. We don't want to lie down. I had to convince myself as a result of being made to slow down from health issues. That's what God used to get my attention. To say, listen, you're going to, you're going to slow down, okay? And uh, you're going to get margin in your life, even if I have to make you. Just an evidence of His love for you and me. He makes me to lie down. He makes me. I need that. Here's what I like. We'll get to this a little bit more later. He leads me beside still waters. Do you know what still waters are your still waters? Do you know where to go to find the still waters for your life? You need to. And I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. All right, Mark, go ahead. Keep going, Mark. All right, go. Maintain your balance. Maybe a better way to put this is learn to manage the imbalance. Learn to manage the, uh, the uh, imbalance. Look on the back of the page. Uh, there are two or three. I got three. I've added one this week. Uh, how do you learn to manage the imbalance? Number one, learn to say no. I wrote down, I think sometimes some of us have what I call the NTBN disease. The need to be needed. And therefore you can't say no. It's a yes to everyone. In fact, maybe the only person who ever get no in your family. Everybody else gets yes. You're always available to everybody else, but not to those who frankly love you and need you uh, uh, the most. So learn to say no. Learn to say no. One of the most helpful things for me some time ago was really getting a sense, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, of the self-awareness of uh, when I'm at my best, uh, with whom, uh, who am I with when I'm at my best, what am I doing when I'm at my best, uh, being able to answer those personal those kind of questions, it gave me the freedom to be able to say no to requests and not feel guilty about it. Because it's just not in my sweet spot. It, it's just not something that uh, that I'm the best at doing. 
And uh, so it's very helpful to me. Number two, find your rhythm for life. Rhythm is kind of an L and a flow and an up and a down. The universe has a rhythm, it has seasons, it has night, it has day. If you look at the life of Jesus, and there's some verses uh, that I gave you earlier, you see Jesus' life had a rhythm of, 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 uh, of, of demand on his life, of pressure on his life, of service, of ministry, and then he would withdraw. There's always a rhythm to Jesus' life. Uh, I think it helped him to uh, keep things uh, balanced. Uh, in his uh, uh, in his life, and one of the things that I had to learn to gauge was I, I felt like there there was a season in my life that I lived with the foot on the accelerator all the time. Okay, and for a long time, I really thought that was good. It was a sign of getting things done, sign of being driven, signs of uh, uh, completing uh, getting results and completing projects. And as I look back, I couldn't have been more wrong. I couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't be driven by team, but you need rhythm in your life. What I've discovered is the more rhythm I have in my life, the better I am at accomplishing things. I have rhythm. Okay? Uh, number three, you do not have a number three, uh, but I'm uh, adding this. Pay closer attention. Pay closer attention to who you are becoming than what you are doing. Pay closer attention to who you are becoming and less to what you are doing. God created us as human beings, not human doings. We have, I do, a tendency to define success by results in what I'm doing rather than who I am, especially who I am before God. Okay, C, first suggestion. Decide who was huge. Decide who you want to please. I didn't realize how much I was driven by an approval addiction. Especially the people that I work with and for. I simply didn't realize that for a long time. And it doesn't mean you don't want the please it for a spouse or a boss or peers, or, you know. But managing that and not let that, that become disproportionate. Okay? And I think I had developed uh, you know, the habit of what was more important to me is are the people that I live with and work with pleased with me, and I was less concerned about whether or not God was pleased It's possible to please others and not please God. It's less possible to please God and not please others. And we have to go after pleasing God. Jesus said, I'm always doing what is pleasing to Him. Always doing what is pleasing uh, to, uh, to Him. The more you and I, listen to this principle, the more you and I are concerned about the approval of others, the less you and I are concerned about the approval of God. The more you and I are concerned about pleasing others, the less you and I are concerned about pleasing God. And it's just a good barometer to help us get the stress uh, a little bit uh, managed. All right? Uh, uh, and underneath the two, the second thing is avoid comparison games. Uh, I, I've never had a deep struggle with that, but I've talked to enough people through the years that their life was all about comparing themselves to others and then adjusting their life and then comparing again. You can never win that. You can never win that. You're going to come to one or two conclusions every time you compare. One, I'll never be live up to their expectations. I'll never be as good as they are. I'll never be like them. Or two, I'm already better than they are. One leads to discouragement. The other leads to arrogance. Both are losers. Okay. The only comparison that should be in our thinking is this. Am I seeking not perfection? Am I seeking to be the best person that God wants me to be? And living in the tension that the answer to that more often than not is, I get 
and, and just living in that tension. Not in defeat, but in living in that tension. All right, D. This is kind of where we left off last week. Develop self-awareness. Look at the passage in John 8, 12 and 14. Jesus really had a sense of who He was and what He was to do. And I think that's, that's something all of us should have. Who am I and what am I supposed to be doing? And I, be, I gave you this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 tank, storage tank, which is a picture of you. Mark, put that on the screen. Everybody's got that there. Uh, at the top, uh, you've got this storage tank, then you've got levels, various levels of, uh, of, uh, of uh, in, in the tank. Uh, the top level is kind of, okay, it's straight a little bit. i got a little bit of an uh, over issue with worry. If you don't, uh, if you don't uh, begin to, uh, you know, to uh, restock, refuel, then that moves into anxiety. And then next week we're going to what happens if I let it get down toward the bottom and there's fumes? There's fumes. That's burnout. Talk about that in life. But uh, the top is uh, in the fillers, and then the bottom uh, era are the, is it worth the drainers? And I ask them, give me a chance at your tables. I ask you to look at the fillers and the drainers in your journey in terms of people and in terms of things. What kind of persons fill you? What are they like? Why, do they, why is it that they fill you? Why is it when you leave them you are energized and not depleted? What are they providing for you that energizes and fills your journey and your life? And then on the other end, what people, and I, it's easy to go here the names and faces, <laughs> what people, what are they like when they're sucking the life out of you? When they're draining you? When they're depleting you? When they're de-energizing you and me. In people and in activities. And I hope you gave that some, uh, uh, some, uh, some thoughtful time. I'll give you a chance to look at that in, uh, in just a few minutes. All right, turn on the back of the page and there were a handful of sentences that I think all of us need to be able to answer. Uh, some of them I will have a little bit uh, with the uh, drawing. Uh, finish these sentences. Uh, hopefully you'll give us, uh, give us some thought. I am most productive when... When are you? When are you at your best? Some of you are like me. You're a morning person. Okay. Some of you are an afternoon person. Some are still looking for when am I productive? Okay. I'm most productive in the morning. Uh, I tend to go to bed at nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. I tend to be up somewhere between four and five in the morning. And uh, and I tend to be very productive uh, early in the morning. And I tend to be very productive when I'm alone. Okay, and uninterrupted, that, that's uh, my high productive time and, and environment and surroundings. Okay, I am drained by, again, that's people and activities. I am energized by, that's people and activities. I am most vulnerable with, you may not be comfortable answering that at your table with your group, and, and I respect that, and hopefully they will as well. But I am most vulnerable when I'm tired. Okay? And, and I know this sounds because I, I re-energize by solitary, uh, by alone physical activity. I'm by myself, I'm walking, uh, I'm not running anymore, but I'm on a bike or something. But I'm also most vulnerable when I'm alone. I know that seems competing, uh, but it really isn't for me. Okay, uh, So both of those like, uh, I don't mind, uh, Linda is leaving to go visit her sister in Kentucky. Her sister is really dying of cancer and is leaving this week for about 10 or 11 days. And uh, I selfishly, you know, my dad selfishly, do you have to be gone that long? Uh, I, 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 I don't like being alone. Okay? I feel vulnerable when I'm alone. Okay? I am most fulfilled when? When are you at your best and enjoying it the most? I am most fulfilled when? Uh, you know, mine is a combination of, of studying and, and writing and, and then basically trying to get out of me the things that I've studied and written and, uh, in terms of communicating and teaching them. Uh, and then for me, success. I've got two, I have two success uh, definitions. One is more personal, and that is, 
I want those who know me the best. Primary family, friends, you co-workers, those who know me best, okay, to respect and love me the most. And those are very simple, very straightforward, but nobody knows me better than those people. And I want them to respect me in spite of all my flaws and to love me in spite of all my flaws. So those who know me, uh, to uh, love me and respect me the most. And then the second one, which is again very simple for me, it's a little bit more uh, life, uh, life purpose and success, but I don't think it can be any simpler, at least for me. I believe that God created me and you for purpose. I believe that purpose is discerned by knowing your God-given design or mind, which is part of what defining my face is about. The better you understand how God's put you together, you have a greater sense of self-awareness of who you are and what God created you to do. So with that preface, one definition of success for me is very simple. To know and to do the will of God. Defining success, success is important as God wants you to define it. If not, then others around you, your work, the world will define what success looks like. And it will not be God's definition. So define what success looks like uh, for you. Okay, now, E, the next, E, E, cultivate a few, because we only have time for a few, a few vital, I call them vital relationships. Vital relationships. It, it won't be dozens of people. None of, we don't have time. Okay, uh, uh, I'm... <coughs> I'm probably talking here outside of, of, the, of the husband wife relationship. Hopefully that's a vital relationship. Something outside uh, of that. Uh, my growing concern with, with, with social media is that it enables us to be connected more and better than, and better than we ever have. But it's also very impersonal. There's a sense that we have never been more connected and yet at the same time disconnected. Disconnected. Okay. As long as you're, 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 you're as it were, texting, as long as it's in, impersonal, it's easier. But when you're face to face, there's so much picked up on body language and tone that you don't get picked up in words that are text. And I'm afraid social media has given us a place to hide. A place to hide. And uh, uh, a good way to measure this is when was the last time you looked into your contact list? How big is that number? I bet it's bigger than you could ever imagine. How many of those folks do have any kind of regular contact, contact with? It's probably a very small percentage. How many of those, I mean, and is this person or persons even in your contact list? If you were to kill over dead today, who would be your partners? I mean, who are you close enough to connected with vital relationships? I mean, I call them 2 a.m. friends. You could call them at 2 a.m. if they had their phone in the bedroom, which we never did. Then they would be there for you, okay? So I can't be your 2 a.m. a.m. friend because I'm not available, okay? But one thing we did years ago, is we take our devices, we put them the other end of the house when we go to bed, okay? Okay, and if the emergency happens overnight, you know what? It'll be there in the morning. But at least I had a good night's sleep. <laughs> and the older I get, more important that is for, uh, for me, okay? We need each other, especially encouragers. Invest in others. Give yourself away. Help and serve. And uh, try to set boundaries for what I call those depleting or draining relationships. That's not easy if it's your spouse. Not easy if it's a family member. Bless your spouse. Okay? But you, you got to manage that. you, you got to manage it. Okay? Uh, Alf. Alf. A little bit tied into E and managing the strip. Keep home, that's the closest. Keep it healthy. Keep it healthy. Uh, talk, have conversation. Nothing drains us like trouble. 
uh, at home. We need each other. Just husband, those of you, you know, husbands and wives, or, uh, perhaps somebody who's still living there, those, what are those home relationships are for you? Uh, don't take them for granted. We live in a very disconnected world. And we can live with people, spouses, parents. We can live with people and still not be connected. And still hide. Okay? I'm reminded, I think many of you are, we gather in here for worship at 8.30 and 10 and 11.30 and then on Saturday night and thousands of people come through. There's no way of knowing how many of those folks are alone and disconnected. And one of the dangers, one of the dangers of a large church like ours is you can come here two or three times a month okay, and still be alone. I mean, you can swim in that worship center and sit down and then leave. And, and you know, hopefully somebody spoke to you, but or they maybe nodded at you or smiled at you, what have you. But that wasn't real back, and you left. And the world makes that easy. The church shouldn't make it easy. Okay. All right. Uh, G. Stay close to God. Obviously, this is one, but when, when it's amazing as the as the pressure mounts, as the stress mounts, how easy it is to forget uh, and to stay connected with God. Let me ask you this question: When and where and how is your best way to connect with God? Many of you, like I have either through human resource or school or what have you, we've all taken personality tests. The most common ones are the Myers-Briggs Temperament Inventory, MBTI, and or it could have been the Performax, the DISC, D-I-S-C. Those are God-given personalities, pretty much set in place by the time we're four or five years of age. Uh, they have upside, they have downsides, but basically uh, who we are and how we live out our lives and connecting and relating to the people in the world around us. What most Christians don't realize is that we also have a spiritual personality. And that's how we best, best and most comfortably connect with God. Do you know what that is for you? That's a great stress reliever to know what that is. Okay? Uh, on the screen is uh, if you will go to my website called jandlministry.com and look under the spiritual dash gift. Notice that dash, dash gifts. You will see uh, my, you'll see a, 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 a phrase there, my uh, a sacred pathway. My sacred pathway. You can go there and uh, print that PDF. It's about 50, 55 statements that you respond to. And then you just add up the results. And out of nine possible pathways for connecting with God, there will be a couple, maybe three, that are your primary ones. That makes sense? Like, this won't surprise you, but my primary way to connect with God is intellectual. Reading, study, things, especially things related to uh, the Scripture. Uh, uh, the second one for me is activist. By that I mean getting things done for God. Being on mission for God. Okay? Uh, getting results, you know, hopefully that are, uh, that are, that are god granted. But there are nine. I encourage you to print that out and take that and, and then uh, discover what are your primary two, maybe three ways that you best connect with God and make sure, not just under stress, make sure that's happening. That's happening. Okay? Uh, like one of them is a naturalist. Okay? Uh, Mike, uh, where is Mike Kelsey? Mike's probably, they come, I wouldn't surprise me if that's one of Mike's uh, top one. And, and because uh, Mike's hungry, he likes being outside. Uh, 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 naturalists to just really meet God in the world that God created in me. Okay? I get bored in about three minutes. Okay? That's just not me. That's not how I connect with God. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate God's creation or standing at the beach and looking at the ocean. You know, uh, I, I do, but I tend to yawn and not worship. Doesn't mean I'm not grateful for God's creation. It's just how God wired you to connect with Him. So I, I wanted to give you that resource. I hope that you'll use it. And uh, I, I know that you'll find it uh, uh, helpful. Stay close to God. Do what works for you. Uh, know how you best connect with God. And let me explain this 
measure inputs and outputs. We tend spiritually, we tend only to measure the inputs. Let me explain what I mean by that. Especially if there's one ounce of legalism in you. Okay, and I have pints of it. Okay, as do some of you. We tend to measure how we're doing spiritually by asking how many questions. How many times this week did I pray? How many times this week did I read my scripture? How many times this week did I go to church? How many times this week did I uh, speak up for God? Have conversations spiritually? How many, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many? And, and I'm not saying that it's not some way to measure where you are in your journey. Okay, the problem with how many is it's never enough. Because you can always do more. I mean, when have you read your Bible? When have you prayed? When have you engaged in a spiritual conversation about it? When have you given enough? It's just almost self defeating. Try to learn to measure your journey more by what I call outputs. Outputs are, and we've talked about here in that series on it. Outputs have to do with likeness to Christ. In other words, am I more patient today? Especially am I more patient when stress is in place? Am I more forgiving? Or am I still more resentful? Am I more through the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentle, meekness, self-control. Am, am, am I more we tend, I'm telling you, I've, I've watched my life and Christian life for many, many years. We tend to measure by the inputs and the how many's. And what's life changing is by the outputs and by the of Jesus. The first one is easier to gauge. Do you put them under all? The last one is life altering. Because you don't like Jesus. And I think it's I think the outputs are more measurable than we think they are. And the outputs lead us to discomfort. Great discomfort. Because we begin to realize there's not a lot of change going on. Uh, I wouldn't name any names, but I've been here a long time. Okay. And uh, I've had people say to me, Pastor Jimmy, I read through the Bible every year. Yeah, I remember I know these people. And I've always wanted to say that the Holy Spirit checked me on this one. And that is, one, are you reading the same one I'm reading? Okay. And number two is, when's it going to matter? Do you know how those kind of people measure their life? How many times? How many? How many? Listen, I'm not against reading through the Bible in a year. You, you, you know it's just years. The issue is I'd rather read through a little bit a day and it transform my life than read through the whole thing and say, check the box. Okay? Alright. Uh, number H. Ask for help. Ask for help. Uh, I don't do a lot of weddings, but I seem to kind of be in the middle of, of, of several the last few months. i got a couple that are coming up in a couple of months and meeting with the young couples. And that's always good. You kind of see the, uh, the energy that's going on there. And, and uh, you know, they're all lovey dovey and they tend to be blind and stupid. <laughs> Those of us who have been married more than 20 years know that. Okay? We, we, uh, we know that. And one of the things I always tell them listen, this is going to be rocky at times. Okay? And, uh, and don't be afraid to ask for help. There will come time, probably in your marriage, if you want to ask that you're going to need help outside of yourselves. It's not a sign of immaturity and irresponsibility to get help outside of yourselves. It is a sign of maturity and responsibility. Know when you need help outside of yourself. And don't be embarrassed and afraid to ask for it. 
sometimes the people who speak best into our lives to begin with didn't know us at all. They have a more objective view of what's going on. So don't be afraid. When you get stressed, when you get under it, don't be afraid. I need help. I need help. And don't be afraid to reach out and, and let somebody walk you uh, 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 through this uh, in, your, uh, uh, in your journey. You can call a coach, a counselor, uh, it can be a, a mentor, or what have you. And then uh, I enjoy today. Enjoy today. What did the psalmist pray? Today. Today. This is the day that the Lord has. Could have said yesterday, and he could have said tomorrow, but he did. Today. Today. Present. Enjoy. Uh, I am better at that than I have ever been. Uh, the only time through life, uh, uh, up until recent years, you know, smell the roses, you heard that smell the roses? No, 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 man. Listen, I'm grabbing a hold of the thorns. Okay. I have let go of those thorns, and uh, I didn't realize how good the roses smell. And life can get busy, and, burn, and I understand that, okay? Take a deep breath and smell it. Enjoy today, especially relationally. Because you can't, today will be gone tomorrow. Enjoy today. This is the day. This is the day. Jesus said in Matthew 6, the passage of a couple weeks ago, we looked at under worry, verse uh, 34, uh, uh, don't worry about tomorrow, it will take care of itself. Okay, in other words, issues to worry about and stretch you out, they'll be there in the morning when you get up. Okay? But don't worry about those. Enjoy today. Smell the roses. Enjoy today. Count your blessings. Life is too short. Let me, uh, before we get into the sign around the table, uh, we have a mixed bag in here. We, you know, I, I don't know what the average age. We draw it probably half the class from the 8.30 service and then about half from the 11.30 service. But I, I think uh, this will make sense to all of you. Even if you're a little bit younger. Uh, but those of you that are my age, uh, around my age, you'll understand this. More of my life is in the rear view mirror than through the front windshield. And that's true for a, a lot of us uh, that, uh, that are in here. And I ask myself, not, this is not a new question. When I look through that rearview mirror, but I really can't change the past. What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be remembered as? And the older you get, the more you ask those kind of questions. I just wish I had asked them earlier. And the answer to that is if, what do you want people to say about you at your funeral? What do you want people to remember about you when you die? There's a really simple answer to that. Then live that way. When people eulogize you, because unless Jesus is gone, we're all dying. And there will be folks who will get up, family and be friends. We've all been there and eulogize you. Don't let them lie. Hey, you, I have, I have sat in celebration services and wondered, are you not the same person that I do? <laughs> So that's a sign that I never saw of him or her. Okay? And, and, and you, you kind of hope it's true, but you kind of walk out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's, that's true or not. Okay? If you want people to remember you a certain way, and again, I think it's having your success definition of heavy, then start living that way as soon as possible. And they will. And they will. And when they get up and speak about you, and there will be many who would want to speak about you. 
then we want people to come to our celebration service. Not because they have to, but because they want to. And a lot of that is connected to how you and I have chosen to live along the way on the last X number of years that we have. Okay? All right, let's uh, look at uh, Simon, and then uh, uh, I'll give you some uh, time to the table. I want you to reread uh, uh, 1 Kings 19, 1 to 18, and I really want you looking at what I call the signs that Elijah is burning out. He is stressed out almost to the end. They are there. We talked about a lot of those last week and this week. Then I want you to look really as, as, uh, as he goes and he hides, and God finds him. I want you to look at how God ministered to him in order to begin to help him to manage, uh, as it were, the stress that was, uh, that, was in, uh, that was in his life. If you haven't done the, the fillers and the drainers and the sentences, do that. It's a great, it's a great uh, uh, assignment for you to work on uh, there. Uh, what are your greatest stress points? Uh, how do you reduce and manage the stress in your life? Take some time to talk about some of those sentences that you believe that they're comfortable with. Don't, don't put yourself in a, in, a, in a place of discomfort. And, uh, uh, and, and walk away, uh, walk away from last week and this week, and walk away with something. Uh, one of these nine suggestions to walk away with something that will help you better manage the stress in your life. Okay? Father, thank you for our time together. Thank you for... Uh, example of Jesus and Elijah and I think Moses and I think Paul. Uh, I mean, your word is just uh, littered uh, with uh, people who knew you and, and uh, loved you and yet struggle, struggle with the demands and the pressures of, of life. Uh, I can't imagine anyone that had more uh, of, of a press of the crowd and more demand for life than, 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 than did Jesus. You ever see that rhythm? That rhythm. And uh, we, we need that. Uh, we know that, that, that we find rest, real rest of soul in you. Forgive us for not knowing how we best connect with you and making sure that happens uh, in our journey. Help us by your spirit uh, to uh, better manage and reduce the stress in our lives. We've got to cooperate with you. We've got to take some personal responsibility to get there in our lives. Some habits that have been set for years are not going to change in a day or two. It's going to take weeks to set in new habits. But the outcome and the enjoyment of life and perhaps the length of life uh, will be radically altered if we make those choices to do that. Bless the time of uh, discussion around the table today. In Jesus' name I pray.